So over here, the reason I'm here is because if you look at the hangman, the biggest difference, by the way, the Hikikomori route and the Sunny route is that actually you can fill up this entire hangman game, as it turns out. Um, there's technically two keys I'm kind of missing. Uh, uh, oh, that's actually there's more. Oh, uh, there's actually two. Or three, really. Well, technically Z. I know that Z is actually not something you can get right away. You have to get the other ones first. Oh, there's actually four I'm missing. What the heck? <laughs> oh my god. I'm missing more than I thought. Really. Hmm. There's one capturing in a steel trap. There's one in the field of white snow. Uh, I wonder if I caught these in the sunny route or... I don't remember now. Alright, well, I, I do know one thing. Uh, you can get this one, H. I kind of missed this one. You, I think you can get this in the, in the sunny route. I'm not entirely sure, though. I guess I should check out the other ones. I, forgot, I don't know. I guess I didn't double check to make sure if I, if I got all the other keys yet. I guess I didn't get V and Y yet. I missed those. I mean, in the field of snow, wouldn't that be in Snow Glow Mountain? Did I miss that somehow? Where would that be? I guess I'll have to look that up later. Anyway. You can get H, however, in apparently in a lost Pyre's Flame. Well, it has a reference to Pyre Forest. But where? Well, I looked it up, so... It's apparently next... Like, it's where the bear would be, the rare bear. But it's to the right, I think? It's east, I think. Somewhere east. Um... Somewhere. I think. Hold on, wait. Oh, hold on, wait. S somewhere around here, I think. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, okay. I'm making some progress. Uh, over here, alright, okay. So this area, I don't think I've been to yet, because I didn't notice that this was here. So go over here, and... Well, I don't know. Hmm. It's too strong to be cut. Well, let's see. What do I do? Oh. Mewo? Is that you? Oh, duh. That's not Mewo. <laughs> duh. Hmm. Alright. Well, I guess let's distract it. Just like the spiders, maybe. You gotta distract it. Like, with that. Whoa. Ah! Ah! Distract it. Ah! Uh. Okay, next one. Ooh, ah! Uh. Next one. Yeah. Don't kill me. Uh. Eh. I go this way. I see something over there, but um, I go this way. Oh, there's a watermelon over there. Hmm. Okay. Here's some flame for you, please. Grab this. Foxtail? Folktail? Foltail? <laughs> How do you say it? O-tail. A lot of speed. That's not, that might be good for Kel? Well, he has to crack his hair clip. Okay, fine. We'll give him the faux tail. Not a real tail. Or is that- Would I have a better item, actually? Because this is technically something you could have went- You could have gotten before. Hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Actually, we'll keep the cactus hair clip. Anyway. Stop it. Stop, stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what happens if we go this way? Oh, you can go this way, I guess. You see, you'll see this thing. Hi, Marie. Okay. A stump. Hmm. Well. Oh. Stop it. Here's a thing. A magical bean. The heck is that? What the heck is this magical bean? Uh, where it starts with random emotion. Alright. Interesting, but... Not very useful, to be honest. Uh, where else I can, can I go? Hmm. Not sure, actually. There's gotta be something here. Oh, there you go. I guess it's supposed to go inside there. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I did not know that. Alright. 
Oh, and there's somebody here, I guess. And also a picnic basket. Let's save the game. What's up? Welcome to the Lost Forest, where you find things you never knew were lost in the first place. Or perhaps they're forgotten for a reason. Hmm. Interesting. That reminds me, actually. Did I... I, I didn't check the... Marie's cookie. <laughs> Let me check it real quick. She gave me a cookie, by the way. Marie's cookie. Everyone's favorite cookie. Made with Marie's love. Good. Well, it doesn't say what the effect does. I assume it's a full heal. Anyway, here's the Lost Forest, by the way. Um, is it gonna be like a Legend of Zelda thing, you know? Do 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 I see multiple entrances. Oh no, I don't know how to like go through this. Um, I guess I'll just pick randomly and see where it leads. Oh. I guess I'm back here. Okay, um, that's not the right way. Let's go this way. Oh, this seems different. I suppose we all hold secrets. No matter how lost or how deep down we bury them, they find their way back to the other side. Hmm. Hello? Hmm. Scary ghost bunnies. Scary. Uh... Kill? Kill the ghost bunnies, please. Kill the creepy ghost bunnies. Happy music, though. Despite... These monstrosities. You're pretty easy. I guess, again, you're supposed to... You could have went here a long, you know, long time ago. I guess. Alright, multiple entrances again. Is it again? Do 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 Um I guess I'll go this way. Trying to lose yourself? Or have you accomplished that already? Either way, this is the right place for you. Perhaps that's why you come here, to finish the job. Hmm. Usually we tend to do things we want, as opposed to things we say we do. I've never been one for wants. I'm more of a need kind of person. I suggest you look for the exit before your needs become more apparent. Keep going right. You're still here? You must have either given up or you have fully embraced your fate. A confession perhaps, but I'm not the one to tell. There was a boy wandering around here before, very similar to you. He went into the darkness and never came out. How regretful it must have been to never find what he was looking for. Be it regret, defeat, or confusion, no one will know. I've seen lost and I've seen blind, but the combination is unsettling. Perhaps you are hiding away from the right way. Morals are lost on the wicked. How does one defy malice without intent? Why do you continue down this path when it's most certainly not the right way? This journey is too arduous for those faint of heart. Do you wish to leave, children? I will not blame you. No. I will not leave. There's no saying about wasting time when life is living a life that is now your own. Dreams can feel that way, like this forest. Lost. I don't know, I'm getting new dialogue, so I'm just gonna keep doing this. Sometimes we hide things from ourselves, we create different truths and eventually forget our way. Have you found yours yet, or are you still lost? Forget all you will, or try to. Darkness manifests whether you're aware or not. Hide the inhabitable behind ignorance and watch your life fall. Falling, eh? Don't talk to me about falling. The darkness surrounds you and it's a terrible thing, but your truth has guided you. How much longer can you keep it? The darkness surrounds you. How much longer can you Okay, so repeating dialogue. Let's try going up this time, maybe? Darkness surrounds you. Let's try left. Oh, okay, left seems a little different. Because I see a ghost bunny here. So maybe that was the correct way? Maybe? Try going this way now. Okay. Uh. Hmm. See a ghost bunny there. Or up. It's gotta be some kind of pattern. I don't know. Uh, left? 
up this way? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, This way? No, it doesn't lead anywhere, I feel like. How about this way? Alright, this seems different. Uh, how about this way? No? Hmm. How about left? Hmm. It looks the same. How about this way? No? The bunny seems to indicate something like this different. Like when the bunny's over here, it looks different. Can you go this way? Huh. Hmm. Uh, how about this way? How about if I just follow what the bunny, like, is closest to? Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, at least over here. I mean, this looks different. Hmm. Got a pearl. Okay, multiple ways to go from here as well. And he just repeats himself. Okay, I guess the idea is now you're not supposed to re exhaust his entire dialogue right from the get go. That's kind of what I did because I want to see his dialogue. But can go this way. All right. Hmm. Oh, I see some people here. I think we're lost, dude. You must be a long way from home. Hey, buddy. I don't think Pluto will be somewhere like this. <laughs> okay, these guys are here randomly. Shadow Basil, is that you? You're still, still around, eh? Alright. Try going this way? Maybe? Oh. I can't, actually. Hmm. Weird. Nothing down here. How about if I go this way? Oh. Music has stopped? Is there something here? You have reached the end of the lost forest, but the beginning of the truth. I will tell you a story that has been lost through time. A story about the creation of this reality. In the beginning, there only existed two. The dreamer and his room. The dreamer grew wary of his room and created a door that led to many different worlds. Walking the path as a visitor to these worlds, the dreamer would come and go as he pleased. Slips and falls, tumbles and drops. The dreamer's curiosity and clumsy exploration eventually led him to a certain world. One not like the others. One painted with chaos and bathed in darkness. The dreamer slowly became filled with dread. Quiet as they may have been, words of malice quietly crept into his mind, whispering lies, secrets and truths. Powerless to silence the noise, the dreamer manifested benevolent entities in his different worlds. Then he compounded his worlds above the dark realm, sealing it with their combined might. Yet despite his valiant efforts, the darkness's presence never abated. Even with new allies, the darkness continued to scrape and scratch at the back of the dreamer's mind. The noise might have subsided, but it never went away. The dreamer could run and bury away his fears, but one still has to face his own reflection. What the dreamer had created was something he could not be part of, something outside himself. The dreamer's own power was his greatest adversary. Knowledge, or the absence of it, would become the dreamer's greatest gift. To truly escape the perils of his own faculty and extend the blissful state of ignorance, only then would the noise cease to agitate the dreamer's sanity. So, the dreamer took on another name, and chose to forget himself. From that time on, the dreamer has lived among us. Amongst us, rather, not among us. <laughs> Simply as an inhabitant of this world. Traveling along blissfully, Ignorant of his own fabrication, fabri I can't, I can't speak. You see, ignorant of his own fabrication. Children, I must warn you. As of all things that are born in and out of this world, an end will threaten this one too. Though the dreamer may have subdued the in 
I can't say this word. Inexorable. Inexorable? Inexorable. Inexorable? Anyway, the darkness grows still. No bandage can stifle an internal wound. And there will be a time when its influence will bleed through. Forgetful the dreamer may be of this peril. A peril never forgets to be. Yet the end of this world may be an inevitable. In inevitable. I can't, I still can't say words. Yet the end of this world may be an inevitability. In inevitability. The dreamer is the only one with the ability that can truly set the world free. Ah, yes, that's the flame. And he walks, he just walks into it. Good. Becomes a keyboard key. Good. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Also, <laughs> he's lost something over there. Uh, that's interesting. You know, that's that's basically Amori, the story. So, you know, it's a little bit more direct of of what this world is, you know? I mean, it really is. Like, it's sunny. I mean, to, just to basically just explain it, it's just, it's just sunny as the dreamer. He created this world, obviously, with imagination. Eventually, though, by, you know, wandering around his dream world, he found black space, right? His distorted, uh, repressed memories that are manifested as monsters and distorted, like, chaotic noise, basically, just like... His trauma personified. Um, what he did, he went back to his like you know his nice places. He built them and created allies like his friends, or otherwise I guess characters or whatever, to make him feel better and forget about you know all his trauma. And what he finally did as well is transform himself into a Mori, you know, to completely forget who he was. In his dream world was his greatest wish and that's how he became a mori i guess that's interesting that's a lot of exposition actually so it's, it's a very lot of direct exposition as well it's told in you know in a fantastical way i guess but it basically just explains the basis of this game you know most of it anyway other than the incident i guess but there you go i guess that's it just to get that, you know, just 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 to get that key, and I think you could have gotten when in the sunny round as well, maybe. I'm not entirely sure though, but I definitely only got this in the uh, in the Hikikomori rounds. There you go. All right. So here's the other key that I missed uh, in this area. You can only get it in the Hik Hikikomori route. I also uh, got the. Um, I forget which key it was, but I also got the other key that I already got on the original playthrough. As it turns out, it was inside Humphrey. In a cage. Uh. Oh, don't worry about that. In a cage somewhere, I guess. Just real quick. So, yeah, that was. That was, uh. One of the keys. Yeah, in the field of white snow. Also in the flames of a pyre, I think, as well as the last one I got uh, in the Lost Forest. And the one that was, I think it was V, Captured in a Steel Trap or something like that. I think that was in Humphrey. And again, I already got that at uh, in the original playthrough, so I just got that off screen. As well as uh, the last one is the Past the End of Road. Well, we'll get to that at the very end, I guess. Let's do that. So, the last hint for the Hangman game is at the end of a road, right? And we went here before, and this is the end of the road, right? Uh, let's talk to this person. Is this the same thing? Hello, children. <laughs> may interest you in a curiosity? I know of a place. You may have heard of it. It goes by many names. The Dark Void. The Deep Pit. The Shadowy Chasm. Here in the deep well, we call it the Abyss. It's just a pass. It's just past the end of the highway. Would you like me to take you there? Mm, hold on. Let me save the game. Will we? Uh, will we fight 
Like, uh, an angry dude with a broken arm or something, maybe? I don't know. Can we just go directly? What we had before, we just, we just look at the end of the road and there's nothing there. So I guess you have to teleport this guy. Well, let's go to the Abyss. Sounds like a fun place, right? Sounds great. Kind of reminds me of Black Space. Is it the same thing? I don't know. Because Black Space was also kind of like Abyssy, I guess. Alright. Well, that's all the keys we have, it seems. We're here. Do you want to go back? No. I'm here for a reason. Alright, so these are all the keys we've collected. Uh, we can look at it one more time. I mean, obviously, the, the Hangman game is very reminiscent of... ...of what we learned in the Sunny Route, I guess. Mm-hmm. Good. And then here's the, the final key right here, hidden right here. Not much to do around here, it seems. It's very narrow. So, all we gotta do is collect this key. Z. And the game crashed. All right, good. Let me just open the game up again. Oh, oh and I'm back. All right. And yeah, okay. He just puts us back here. There was always a bit of delay when I recaptured the game, though. So I missed like two seconds. But I don't think there was much to it. Um, but yeah, more has opened up. Um, I guess we'll continue. I don't know. I wonder if there's any save points up ahead. I'm always afraid to, you know, continue onwards to any new location because I always think, oh, there's not going to be no save points. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be a save point, actually. I guess we'll see. So what I really want to do is go back, you know, back to Marie's picnic basket and save the game. Anyway. Alright. Got some cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. Here's the abyss. The abyss is actually pretty. It's, it's not that scary, really. It's pretty nice. Nice waterfall sounds, running water. Kind of relaxing, actually. Also, reverse mermaid, I guess. I mean, I guess sure. Let's just murder it real quick. I'm pretty maxed out at this point, I feel like. Off screen, I did level up to max level and everything. Got a bunch of clams because I need it for maybe like a small little thing I might want to do. That's how I ended up with so much clams. And all the level ups. I just did the, the squizzard thing, you know, the squizzard farm. We gotta kill all the squizzards over and over again. That's just kind of what I did. Oh yeah, I, th th let me double check actually. Oh yeah, I still have the clam coin. I don't think I showed this in the original playthrough, but I guess it's in Last Resort. One of the rooms actually had the Life Jam guy, actually. You know, it's just him just hanging out in one of the rooms and one of the watermelons is actually a clam coin, which increases the, the clams you're in in battle, so that's interesting. But I kind of just got that off screen. Because I was thinking, you know, if I'm going to be grinding clams, I need that clam coin. I guess, that I saw on the wiki. The wiki said, you know, that's the best way to farm clams. I don't know. Anyway, I gotta replace it though. I guess I'll put on the, what is it, the bread phones? I feel like that's the best one to have in general. Less stats though, but... You know, Hero, Hero is just here as support. He just has all the support items. He's moral support. Hmm. Two ways to go. It's a shark thing. These enemies are pretty weak, to be honest. I guess I'll murder them. I guess I'll kill them. 
it's just me annoying running away from them every single time because they just come back and try to chase you and also sometimes you fail to run and then it's like you just waste extra time for nothing you know air horn okay uh, again two ways to go this one goes deeper into the abyss which i imagine is where you need to go maybe but i'm curious i'll go over here for us maybe there's more items this way yep i knew it the one we saw in the very beginning let's continue ah that was murder pass to amori which one does more damage? You pass to Aubrey or pass to Amori? Yeah. Seems about the same. Ecstatic. Wow. You know, for such a scary sounding name, The Abyss, it's not too bad. Not as bad as Black Space, you know? Okay, again, multiple ways to go. Oh, well, no, I, I spoke too soon. Now there's like those weird monsters. Okay. Okay, you get to go back if you want to. Um, I mean, what is this way? More ways to go. Ah, there's too many ways to go. I'm gonna grab this item first. Ah, no, just monsters. I'll just attack it. I mean, these monsters are not that scary, really. It's just eyeballs. Reminds me of, um, olives, I guess. I don't know if I need these items, really, but I, I gotta get them, you know? Does it feel right if I don't get them? Alright, let's go that way. Oh, I wanna explore all the routes. I imagine the harder way to go might be the one where you need to go? I don't know. Oh, let's try over here. What's over here? Oh, this monster... Hmm, it's a ladder over there. Oh, it's just an item. Okay. Nope, oh, run away. <laughs> you know, I imagine if this was like a typical horror game, I guess it would be pretty scary. It's just that I'm, I'm just so overpowered, you know? It makes sense, lore-wise. How, like, Amori is just like a manifestation of Sunny's, like, alter ego, you know? as a way to protect him from trauma and fears and all that. I can imagine if this was a typical horror game, these monsters would just one-shot you, you know? They chase you down and you just die or something like that. Again, I'm just like too powerful. It doesn't matter. Despite the spooky background music. All right, so I went that way. That seemed to be the way to go though. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of like a big maze. I want to see what the other way goes too. Honey, I'm sorry. So if I had to guess, I mean, at this point, I, I guess it makes sense. These, like, little monsters, by the way, they're just other manifestations of the, the eyeball creature, you know, that represents Sunny's trauma. It's just in different shapes and forms, I guess. Ah. Alright, so that, that was just items, which is good. Which means I don't have to worry about that way uh, anymore. So I guess, wait, which one was it? Was it this way? That was the area that I went to before, right? Yeah, over here. This guy, I assume, let's go back, but now. Nah. End up over here, all these little small things. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I learned you can do that, by the way. You can just step on them, and finally they go away. Some skeletons. Don't worry about it. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, tell- uh, is this teleportations? Teleportation puzzle? Oh no, um... Hmm, anywhere else to go? I go that way. Seems to be two ways to go. I gotta, like, map this mentally, so I... So I know where I'm going. As long as they're 
as long as there aren't too many branches, it won't be too bad, right? No, oh, no, I think this way as well. Well, let's not, let's, what was the other way? <laughs> I gotta know. All right, let's go. I wonder if it's gonna be the same, like, kind of teleportation puzzle as, like, uh, a deeper well, you know? The location where everybody started losing their memories. Because that one was pretty linear. It wasn't much of a puzzle, actually. You just went one way. Okay, there's that guy again. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know which way is the way forward, which way is the way back. Or which way is the way to, like, items and whatnot. Okay, this I am gonna run. Because I just want to go back real quick. I imagine these guys kind of, like, respawn if I teleport every single time. Maybe? I don't know. I just don't know how it works. Usually when I leave an area, monsters always respawn in this game. Alright, I'm taking so much time just to see. I should just pick a, lo uh, a route. But I'm afraid of missing out on things, right? It happened one time. In the last library, I thought I was going to a route that wasn't... Uh, the main route, but as it turns out, it was, so I missed out on a small side thing. That's what I don't want to miss. Alright, go over here. Oh, oh, well, can't afford that. You know, if, okay, fine, let's merge this thing. Because it's a monster I haven't seen before. It's actually interesting. It looks less like the other somethings, actually. You know, less like the other shadow creatures. It's actually drawn, you know, with pencil. Like all the other characters in this game, at least in the dream world. Well, I guess in the real world as well. Usually when you fight these monsters, what differentiates them is that they're drawn in a different way, you know, that isn't hand-drawn, I guess. Also, skeleton is now alive. Well, baseball cap, interesting. But yeah, but those ones, those, uh, what do you call them? Angular fishes or something? Is that what they're called? They seem actually normal. It's funny. Baseball cap. A mystical cap dating back to 1990X, I guess. Worn by someone who liked, who liked, who liked to go, PK Fire! PK Thunder! Hmm, defense and speed. I mean, speed is good for Kel, right? Is it better than his rabbit foot? Um, uh, it's about the same. Less luck, a higher defense. Sure, why not? Wear it just because. Just because it's new. Alright, so that was an item. And there's this guy again. Um, Alright, let's try going this way. I just want dead ends so I can... So I know that I'm not... Making progress? <laughs> you know, I want to not make progress. So that I get more stuff, right? Like this paper bag. What's that paper bag? Uh, wear it over your head. Defense 13, hard plus 40, and prevents emotion. Yeah, interesting mechanic. I mean, it might be more useful if I got it, like... Earlier in the game. At this point, I don't know if there's much strategy to have, like, no emotion. Um... Maybe. I don't know. Prevents emotion. I don't know if I want that for anyone. I actually want them to have feel emotions, you know? So they can have a, have a type advantage. Alright, so this was the dead end. Okay. Ah, oh, man, there's too many branches. I already lost... I'm already losing track of where I am. Um, but that leads nowhere. Bottom right goes back. It's over here. Oh, another skeleton. Aubrey? Hmm. Amori. I'm a skeleton. It's not alive. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I do wonder, actually, how... what the lore is like. I mean, I guess it's ambiguous. But, uh... You know how there's, like, a bunch of copies in black space and whatnot? And also these skeletons, are they the remains of previous... In, like, uh... incarnations of the dream characters that we always have? These dream friends? Aubrey, Kel, and Hero, and all that. Do they actually just die? You know, do we just clone them every single time? And then they just end up as corpses. Or at least corrupted by black space the entire time. I mean, I, I, I guess it's implied. It's also a dream world, so I don't know how that works. You know, it's just a dream, right? Don't worry about it. I don't know. 
Boom, 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 boom. Hmm. Okay, this seems like the way to go. So I'm 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 actually gonna go back real quick just to explore all the other uh, branches I haven't explored yet. Cause I can't I can't leave now. Can't do that. I want to see what the other ways go. Maybe get some more items first. Though I'm kind of lost because I'm not sure which way to go from here. What was this way? This goes back that way. Did I check over here yet? Okay, that was an item. But yeah, there's like multiple copies. I mean, it's also in for, uh, reinforced by the fact that we kill Basil over and over again in Black Space as well. In both routes. That could have been also just multiple Basils from the past or something that, w that were stuck in Black Space for a long time and then we just kill him. I don't know, I don't know how it works. I guess it's pretty messed up. We just make keep making copies, you know, we keep making clones. And the failed clones just rot away. We just abandon them, I guess, is the idea. Alright, I got a snow cone. I, I think that's it. Well, I saw, I saw a mirror, I think. Or was that something else? I don't know. Hmm. And over here. Alright, I think I understand what this maze looks like now. And now we simply go down the ladder. Probably the last section of this area. Maybe? The music changed. Oh, and there's a save point! It's a dark save point, though. We save at the abyss. Uh, let's make sure that we're all healed up. There's no free healing around here, unfortunately. Also, I sold a lot of my items, by the way. I felt like I needed to, like, uh... Do that. So less scrolling, you know? You know what? Have some tofu. <laughs> you know, two pieces of tofu. Alright. I just want to max out our... It was, you know, not much damage was occurred, but I just want to max out everything and let's head out this way. At the bottom of the abyss, it seems. Hello. It's a face with some tentacles. Hmm. Well, everybody's afraid. Probably what I should do first is to make them not afraid. That'd be great. Well, what should I do? Um, anger? Confetti? Sure, I'll do confetti. Everybody's happy. Oh, I guess we're... Oh, okay, I didn't notice, actually. I was just, just blindly pressing the buttons. We're happy now, <laughs> with the creepy music. Don't worry about it. But it seems like there's like, multiple tentacles we can attack. So we should probably do AoE stuff. Ooh, got debuffed. That's not good. Ow. What? Eh. Ah. Alright, let's do some AoE. I mean, we all... We all... Amori mostly has just AoE stuff. Let's do some of Vertigo. You will do a uh, lineup throw. You will do. I actually want to heal you. And. Well, I could wait for Hero to do it, but Hero might be too slow, so that's why I don't want to rely on him. See the hot dog kill. Alright. Loads of damage. Loads of AoE damage. Dark liquid. Ah. Stop it. My stats. Uh-oh. Everyone feels angry? I think that's a good thing, because we're happy. Therefore, we have the type advantage. I... I... I, I did not know... 
what this boss was gonna look like coming in, so it's actually pretty lucky that I got the right emotion. Um, well, yeah, let's continue. Let me do that. And the wind up throw. A little, a little, uh, oh, I don't have rebound actually. Whoops. Um, let's do, well, let's do the team attack, I guess. Oh, Abby, by the way, is the name of this boss. And you know what? A little smack time as well. Oh, I missed. Let's do this. Do all of the damage. So much damage. One, two tentacles down. She focuses her heart. Oh, is that... Does she, uh, regenerate a tentacle? Can he just do that? Is it gonna be like a Mr. Jossum fight or something? Well, she, it still takes damage, though. So... It's not exactly Mr. Jossum. It's scary. Very scary attack. Man, Amori's, Amori's stats, though, are really low right now. It's not great. Do that. Do that. Actually, you you just... Yeah, focus on Abby, actually. Um, might as well use our items now or something? Well, I don't know. At this point, it's basically the end of the game. Uh, increase Fred's speed? Sure. Make him go faster, actually. I well, might as well use dynamite too, because why not? I have like I have a lot of dynamite actually. I might as well use dynamite. You know, most boss fights have pretty like cool music. This one doesn't have much music to it. It's just ambience. Also, di that dynamite wasn't very strong. <laughs> you know, I guess by the end of the game, items don't matter that much. In terms of, like, DPS, anyway. They're meant to be used early game, but I just never use them, so... <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't know. Just do that, I guess. I like to not... Like, I, I like Amori to just not have horrible stats. It was a milk. Why not? Mm, sure. Let's use uh, Jax, yeah. Because why not? Nying? Nying. That's, that's what the what Abby said. This weird face in the ground. Also, Aubrey's afraid. It's not ideal. I mean, let's just keep doing that, I guess. Uh, just attack. Um... Run a gun and use a toy on her. Here, have a uh, what is it? A sparkler? Have a sparkler. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of damage. You know, Kel is actually insane in terms of damage. His speed is so high. Running gun actually does so much damage. Though I think uh, Aubrey does a about the same. She uses like beat down. It's about the same amount of damage, I think. Oh, he's afraid. Oh, Kel's afraid. That's not good. This fight can't go any longer, otherwise... We're all going to die. From, like, too much... From too much, uh... Deep you know? Like, it's like... That's usually how I win. 
against bosses, I, I debuff them. But now this one's debuffing me. That's that's cheating. Don't you know? I'm gonna use the power of friendship. It worked. Yeah. Got useless XP and those clams that I don't need any at this point, but anyway. Please, no more. I am sorry. Interesting, just like the other creatures, they always say I'm sorry. I am eight small pools, red tentacles across headspace. I am bring offerings there. Please, please, please forgive me, my best friend. Mm, sure. Thank you, dreamer. Okay. That was ominous. I don't, know, is there, I don't know if there's any much more to do with this creature. The truth, I am I'm used to know it, but I cannot remember. So yeah. I don't know if there's any point in like not forgive. I, I believe if you don't forgive her, I think she gets murdered. I don't know if there's any point in doing that though. So if you forgive her though, so you always notice those, no, notice those tentacles you always see around the world. Uh, we can actually interact with them now. Which is interesting. So there you go. But yeah, Abby, I guess it was referenced by that weird branch coral about the like the three guardians of the world or something. I say guardians. I don't know if they, it was that. I don't know if the those were the exact words, but um, there was the the wise one, right? There was the the old one and or something like that. I don't know. Basically, it's the the big yellow cat. Humphrey and the one that was sent to her prison, which is Abby, I guess in the abyss. Something like that. I don't know if there's much, any more exposition given, but I believe it's actually based on uh, one of the characters from the original blog. You know, I, I think it just appeared like in one picture. It was like a weird squid girl or something. So there you go. That's that's why she's here, I guess maybe. Let's go over here. But oh, there's nothing here. Okay, never mind. At least I don't think so. All right. So I guess the the next thing we could do is uh, just simply find her tentacles. I wish it was fast travel. To be honest, uh, <laughs> I have to like walk all the way back. I, I guess I can talk to the guy though. I guess the the guy can just simply teleport me back. Yeah, this guy. He'll just teleport me back, I guess. Alright. That was a little venture in the abyss. I was hoping for more of a fight, to be honest. But maybe it's because I'm so overleveled <laughs> that uh, that fight wasn't actually too bad. But anyway, uh, so yeah. So now we can like interact with these weird tentacles. And get stuff, I think. I am a gift for you, dreamer. Oh, she gave me all reliable. Okay. Well, it's just an empty puddle now. Oh, reliable, eh? Oh, I don't know what that is. Is that a weapon? Mm, I should don't know what it is, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, reliable. Is that that hero thing? Oh, okay, here you go. Hero's ultimate weapon snacks will restore more hard juice in them. So here you go. That's his ultimate weapon. So we basically get the end game items after defeating Abby, um, which they actually have. There's no reason for me to collect them, to be honest, other than collecting them, I guess, because I literally, there's, I don't think there's any more RPG battles I can do anymore. So really, it's just for fun <laughs> but I guess I'll I'll get them anyway so if you remember there's this this one over here I am a gift for you thanks a baseball bat hmm. got a baseball cap and a baseball bat we just turned into nests 
But I believe this one is for Aubrey, which makes sense, you know? It's kind of like real life Aubrey. Obviously, she has a baseball bat. Aubrey's ultimate weapon. There you go. Alright, so here's another one. It's another gift. Abby has a weird way of speaking. And we got a basketball. And you know, Cal's favorite uh, sport? It's basketball, so here you go. I mean, I guess it's fitting. Cal's ultimate weapon. There you go. He has a basketball and a baseball cap. A little... A little ill-fitting, but... Why not? I don't know about ill-fitting or mismatched. Anyway. Alright. So here's another one. Right here. It's another gift. Surprise, surprise. It's a headband. Look at that. So the headband, I guess, is for... Kel. I think. Headband... Where is it? Headband? Headband. Uh, used to keep the hair out of your face. Raises most stats. Hmm. Well, according to my guide, basically, it says it's for Kel, but... It doesn't really raise speed, you know? Well, I guess, well, actually it does raise speed. It's just the same amount as the baseball cap. Plus a few more stats, I guess. That's what it means. Alright, well, sure, why not? I guess it's for Kel. I don't see him wear a headband, though, in real life or in the game, really. But I guess it's for him. I mean, I guess, you know, uh, if you're playing basketball, sometimes I guess people wear headbands. Anyway. Alright, so here's the, like, tentacle location. Another gift from Abby. It's a pretty bow. So I think that obviously that's for Aubrey because she literally has a pretty bow on her hair. Mm, where is it? It's alphabetical order, right? Pretty bow. A polka dot bow. Too flashy for your taste. Oh, actually, it looks different from an actual typical bow. Looks more like the sweetheart bow, you know, actually. But I guess it's for Aubrey. Why not? I assume it's intended for her. So here's another one. Just doing a little compilation probably on YouTube or just cut to all the tentacles. I got I got I got a chef's hat. I assume that's for Hero. Even though he became a doctor in real life, I guess. He abandoned his dreams of becoming a cook and then he became a doctor instead. Or he's going to become a doctor anyway. Uh, Chef's hat is probably out of there. Defense plus 15 restores juice every turn. The pride of every chef. Pretty good! Except, again, I won't be doing any more RPG battles, so what's the point? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did it in the wrong order. Maybe I should have done, um... Maybe I should have done the, the Abyss thing first, and then do, like, uh, you know, the other boss fights. But I guess I did it in maybe the wrong order. <laughs> oh well. Because I don't get to use any of these ultimate items, you know? There you go. So, okay, there's one near the pond right here. Gave me a cough mask. Very appropriate <laughs> for the times, I guess. You're not, e you're not safe. Not even in... Not even in the Mori's dreams. You're not safe from... Uh, viruses. Also, where is it? Cough mask, cough mask. I don't know what order this is. Sometimes, I feel like sometimes it is in alphabetical order, but then sometimes it's not. I don't know. No, I guess it is in alphabetical order. Okay, here we go. Uh, cough mask. Cough mask is keeps germs close to your face. That is true. Increases all stats. Good. You know, I think there was an anime. What was it called? Moyashimon, I think. I think it's the first time I heard about that, the fact that the mask, um, really, it's not, it, it protects you a little bit from other people, but really, it's to protect other people, you know? Because when you sneeze, it stops the germs from spreading to other people. So it's kind of like a communal thing, you know, more so than anything else. I mean, especially popular, a lot of e uh, e uh, East Asian countries where there's high population, you know, and low land mass, I mean, especially Japan. That's why people wear masks, right? Because... You're so close to each other all the time, it's kind of like a society thing, I guess. A cultural thing where 
you're supposed to keep each other safe, you know? It's not about you, but rather the, the group, but anyway. Um, but yeah, okay. Amori got calf mask. I wonder what that means. Does that mean anything? I don't know, we've never seen Amori or like Sunny get sick or anything, so I wonder... At least not, you know, physically sick anyway. Definitely mentally a little, you know, a little uh, deteriorating there, but... I don't know about the physical sickness. We never, we never got like an anime sick episode, you know? Never saw that. Anyway. So I think you can go over here. Yeah, okay, so... That was pretty hidden, by the way. Another like hidden path. You know, just like the TV. This was also pretty hidden. Definitely did not notice this the first time. But I actually went through here off screen. And so you can go over here. Skeletons. Oh, this one's alive. I've been stuck down here so long I can I feel like I can barely move a muscle. Mm, yeah? What's that face for? Alright. And so gonna go inside here. And this is the secret dungeon where there's a bunch of skeletons. I guess more more skeletons that kinda remind you of your party members, I guess. Uh, you know, at least the one with the bow. I don't know if there's any I mean, everyone else just looks the same, I guess. On the inside. <laughs> anyway. Here's one more tentacle. It's the last one, I believe. It's a gift for the dreamer. Yay. I got the red knife. So that's the final ultimate weapon for Amori, I believe. He just, yeah, automatically equips it. It's a shiny new knife, and you can see something in the blade as well. Wow. I think that's a, the same description as the knife we got in the beginning. Because I believe the way it works, by the way, Amori's knife, it, uh, the more you progress through the game, the more like rusted it gets. So before it was a shiny knife and it gets more dull and rusty and all that, which ironically makes it stronger. But then you get the red knife, which is a, a new knife, you know, back to back to working condition and also probably a lot stronger as well. But, um, you know, it's just to look at, really. I, again, I, I'm not going to do much of this, the, all this ultimate power, really. Not much to do with it, really. But yeah, anyway, just, just some skeletons around here. Also some enemies. Ah, I can no help. Uh, 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 ah, damn it. Okay, fine. I guess I'll use my new knife on you then. I'll just murder you. Good. Wow. Well, I mean, I guess you could just do mobs. You could just fight random mobs, I guess. But there's no real, like, you know, use for all these ultimate items, you know? It's kind of just like, it's just for show, it's just to look at. Alright. So if you remember, we we had before, I never really, you know, done much to progress it. But there's a little side quest, I guess. Not really a side quest. It's not really listed in Marie's, like, list, I guess, when you talk to her. But I remember, like, initiating this in the original playthrough and ha I didn't, you know, do much. So, let's see. So now we can actually and see, you know, what kind of paintings this guy would make. Did I pay him already? I can't remember. Okay, I'll pay him again. On this save, I haven't paid him yet, so I'll just give him a thousand clamps. I have a lot of clamps, by the way. Like, magnific magnificent! Alright, so please return after some more adventuring. So the way it works is that you basically have to... I won't disappoint you. You have to leave the area. You have to leave uh, Sprottmo Village and come back. And then he'll finish the painting. You have to do that like a, mi a billion times. And then, he'll, he obviously, he'll ask for commission every single time as well. Yeah, you just leave and come back. I think the idea is that you're supposed to, like, you know, play the game normally and then come back occasionally. But I don't know, the, the game doesn't really... At least I feel like the game doesn't really encourage you to like, really, like, visit him all that much, I guess. So... Like, you, you just end up meeting him once and then just never coming back, so I don't know. Anyway. But he should be finished his first painting once I come back, and I'll probably do this a billion times. Probably on YouTube, probably cut up most of it, but let's see. Depends if he has any unique dialogue, I guess. Le Gasp! We have returned! Please admire my latest masterpiece. He's already framed in the gallery ahead. Alright, so I paid a thousand dollars for this. Good. Wow. This is what happens when you commission a random artist. On the internet, and this is what they give you. Fit untitled. By the great artist Rococo. Hey, I'm just starting out, okay? Give me a break. I want a refund? 
No? Oh well. Well, are you happy with my masterpiece? Just so you know, as my skills become more formidable, my commission rates will also increase. The next masterpiece will cost you 5,000 clams. Will you continue to assist me in my journey of self-discovery? Well, of course, fine. Alright. So what's this one? Alright, this was a little better. You know, it has the basics down and everything. It's people with fruit. Good. Behold my improvement. However, it is plain that I'm still a student. I must shake off this novice energy for my next piece. You know, I think that, I mean, I think that is a classic <laughs> uh, artist thing. You know, learning to draw fruit or something like that. Alright, here's the next one. La Fiesta de Cuetro. As all great artists, artists say, realism is boring. This is my most expressive piece yet. Can you feel my expression? Maybe. I guess. Kind of reminds me of Western cartoons, actually. It just looks like West, like a typical Western cartoon. Uh, okay, so this is the fourth one. Ah, yes. Amori's Unusual Escapades. Nani? What? Are you surprised? What are you saying, huh? Can't an artist change styles? Oh. I guess he watched a lot of JoJo. Good. Alright, let's go over like here. Alright, here's another one. The Final Revelation. Oh, yes. By the great artist Rococo. I won't lie to you. I struggled with this one, but I think it turned out half decent. My next work will be even better. Good. You know, I wonder if all these are drawn... Are they drawn by Omocat? I don't know if they're drawn by Omocat, or maybe someone else from the team, or maybe it's fan art. I don't know. It looks like fan art. I have no idea. I mean, these kind of remind me of the paintings you see in Sweetheart's Gallery, actually. And Sweetheart's Gallery is also a bunch of parodies of other types of paintings, you know? Alright, I gave you all my money. Thank you, fellow living beings. Through these few com through these few commissions on Twitter, I feel as if I had made great leaps in my quest of self-discovery in the process. Next, I'll create a Patreon. I'm also very rich now. I made lots of money. I could do no more for you. I truly feel complete because I'm filthy, filthy rich. And I scammed you with all my... <laughs> no. All right, this is the final one. Okay, the final one is just this. Okay, it really is like art, you know? It's like, it's like a lot of the art is like really complicated and all that, but then the final art is like postmodernism, where it's like very simple instead, or something. I don't know. Amori Aubrey Kellen Hero. My tr art has truly ascended with this masterpiece. I've finally captured you in true essence. I could do no more for you. Okay. I feel like all of these are just parodies of different types of paintings, I believe. Except maybe the Jojo one. I think that's just a Jojo reference. This is, I think this is a Jojo reference. <laughs> Unusual escapades. It, but every other painting is just a parody of uh, the type of paintings. I think, isn't that... I don't remember. I probably have seen something similar, right? Just a bunch of like very simple shapes or something. In front of different backgrounds. And somehow it's like very... You know, considered like very high art or something. I don't know. Anyway. I just know like most art galleries are just they're just um a place to launder, launder money for rich people. At least that's what, what I understand anyway. That's why most art is like just I don't know pretentious, I guess. Anyway. I guess that's it. That's that's the end of this Rococo little quest, I guess. Just draws a bunch of paintings for you and you get an achievement. Good. Alright. Took all my money though. Most of my money anyway. Let's uh, do something else now. So by the way, this is just a really, really small thing. It's actually ex exclusive to the Hikikomori route. So that's why I'm considering just doing this, I guess. But you can talk to this guy. Hey, new boss. I always figured you'd take over the old man's work one day. Hope, hope works for treating you well. You four look like a tight-knit group, but your statues look a bit lonely there, hero. If you want me to make all of you together, I can do that for you. I'm just a humble sculptor. I ain't making the big bucks like you. Still, I owe the old boss a big favor. If you want me to work, you still have to pay for the cost of the materials. 
Something like 3,000 clams each. So you want to make a... You want me to make a statue of one of y'all? Sure. Who do you want to make a statue of? Uh, that's true. Let's make Cal first. Makes sense, because it's his brother, right? Sounds good, boss. Yeah, I'll take a bit to do your own thing. Come back... Uh, come check back later. I'll make a new friend for you soon enough, boss. Alright. Wow. An impressive statue. But yeah, you can make statues, everybody here. Why? I sh why not, I guess. But yeah, you have to do the thing where you come back, you know, just like Rococo, so I'll, I'll have to do that. Real quick. There you go. Here's another statue. Impressive statue of Cal. It captures his essence perfectly. What do you think, boss? I can see that your statues look a bit less lonely now. Do you, make, do you want me to make another friend? It'll cost you 3,000 clams. Alright, next is Aubrey. Why not? Sounds good, boss. Alright. Alright. And here's another statue. An impressive statue of Aubrey. Her cheerful presence lights up the whole area. Isn't that funny? It's funny how cheerful she is in the dream world. And not so cheerful in the real world, but don't worry about it. Alright. A little less lonely. And then the last one will be Amori. Not Sunny, Amori. Alright. Alright, so everybody's here. Impressive statue of you. It's weird to see your face so big. Mm, yes. What do you think, boss? I can see that your statue is looking a bit less lonely now. You know, I was talking to your friends at the picnic and I think they should be invited to this statue party. You want me to make another friend? It'll cost you 3,000 clams. Oh, is it? okay, sure. We can make uh, Marie and Basil as well. Uh, sure, let's, uh... Let's make Basil next, I guess. Why not? I don't know if the order matters. There you go. Here's Basil with his uh, camera. And press the statue of Basil. Even as a statue, he's hiding his face behind a camera. Wow. Well, let's hope he doesn't explode like a watermelon. Alright. And then there's one more. One more friend, and it will be Marie. One of the central plot characters, actually. Alright, so here's everybody lined up together. Here's Marie. Impressive statue of Marie. You never know what's hiding behind her mischievous smile. Well, you see, it's one eyeball. And, you know, covered in, sh in shadow and darkness or something. I don't know. Anyway, here you go. That's everybody, I think. What do you think, boss? I can see the statue's a little bit less lonely now. Dang. Oh, I'm the one feeling lonely. Hey, but it's not too much to ask, boss. Do you think I'll be able to join your statue party? Sure, why not? Sounds good, boss. <laughs> All right. He even wants to, he, he even wants to be in the in the lineup. Secret character, Gator Guy. Is that the new party member maybe? Alright, no, he, he he's really he, he takes up a, a lot of space. And press the statue Gator Guy. Looking good. The secret, like, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh friend. He's our true seventh friend. Never before seen. Well, it's done. This party is officially complete. Yeah. It's just not like looking at the giant faces of all your friends together. Thanks for making me part of this group, even if it's only a statue. You guys are the real deal. Here's my phone number, boss. Just give me a call if you ever need some backup. You're alert, Gatorade. Oh, Gatorade? Gatorade? I don't know if this is a pun. Got you, man. I guess he has a skill where he can summon a, a gator guy, actually. That's interesting. I mean, at this point, I, I, I don't fight any, like, RPG battles anymore, so I don't know if it's any point. But, uh, no, actually, oh, okay, it's just a stat boost, okay. I thought it was, like, literally summoning him, you know, just like Mr. Jossum, you know, you, you summon, like, an extra, like, like, uh, pet creature or something, you know? Well, not a pet, but, you know, like an extra buddy, and he actually takes hits for you or something. That would be kind of cool. It's like you literally become Jossum. But no, it's just like a buff. Which is actually pretty nice. We don't get a lot of like buff, you know? Buff uh, moves. I don't think any of our moves really buff all that much. Or, or at least, you know, the ones that do buff are kind of like very situational, I think. 
I guess it's flex, I guess. Kella has flex, but anyway. But yeah, boost the fest. Well, that'd be really great, like, a long time ago. <laughs> At this point, I don't have use for it. So, I don't know. Anyway. I guess it would help you, like, you know, again, the other uh, boss fights. You know, Perfect Heart was a pretty hard boss fight. I, I, I beat her f uh, first try, so, uh, you know. I, I don't really need all these moves and all these items, really. It, but maybe if you're struggling with that fight, you know, it would help, I guess. But as it turns out, I already beat all the really hard fights in this game, <laughs> so there isn't any el anything else to do. Uh, in terms of RPG battles, anyway. So there you go. That, that was a few like little extra things I want to uh, check out real quick. Well, I mean, speaking of boss fights, I mean, there's like there's one thing, I guess. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's really quick. I can do one more RPG battle. Let's find the true secret boss of this game. The, the hardest boss in this game ever. It's gotta be one somewhere here, maybe. Is it this one? Yeah, here you go. By the way, <laughs> um, there here's a fight that I feel like... I don't know. I don't know if most people miss it. I definitely missed it. I didn't see this one. But apparently you can fight a tree, by the way. This is the very beginning of the game. Uh, and see what happens when you fight it. Look. It's a big, strong tree. You do zero damage. Despite being max level. And everything. Full ultimate weapons. Ultimate items. Everything max. And it's just zero damage. Good. This tree is just too strong. Wow. Let me try, like, red hands. Let's try beat down. Let's try our our best moves. In fact, let's let's just even use megaphone to make us angry. Let's smile at the tree even. Debuff the tree. The tree is too powerful. We must debuff it. The true secret final boss of this entire game, tree. Which in a way kinda makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Eh. Destroy it. You can't. It's too strong. This tree is too strong. It doesn't even do anything. It's just too strong. Um, okay. So, well, let's see. I mean, basically the secret of fighting this tree, by the way, is to use, to use something that gets past the fence. And I believe that passes get past the fence. Oh, let's make ourselves more angry, by the way. Why not? I smiled it. I don't know. Just because. More anger. Maybe it'll do slightly more damage. Does this work? It does 400 damage, right? Oh, there you go. Okay, it does do 400 damage no matter what. But that works. Also, Aubrey's attack works because it goes past the fence. It's still alive. I guess I'll just keep doing it. Let's suffocate the tree somehow. Another megaphone, just because. Because I want to see uh, Mori be super angry. Look at him. Look, he's getting very angry. Look, wait. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. He's furious. Look at that. Very scary. There you go. And then that's it. Yeah, 500 XP. There you go. That was that was like a tree fight. <laughs> this very unique fight that I missed the first time. Uh, I also got the achievement for filling up my full facts, by the way. Which is, uh, I think, by uh, fighting every single enemy in the game. So that was actually the last enemy that I missed as well. You know, here you go. See, you see all the enemies and everything. Um, I think we've seen everything. The only thing I didn't show technically in the playthrough, I guess, would be... Where is it? I'll have to find it. Where is it? I don't remember what it's called. But basically, that was that uh, boss fight in... Or more like a mini boss, really. In the uh, Sprout Mole Village, you know, where the Sweetheart's Castle is. Technically, if you interact with like a like a thing, I don't know what you call it, but like a wire, I guess, you just instantly kill it without fighting it, but you can fight it itself. Here we go, King Carnivore. So this is a thing I technically didn't fight in the playthrough. I didn't record it. I just beat her off screen because it was, you know, it was in the save, this save anyway, where kind of speed ran through the game. And I thought like, might as well fight this thing, I guess. And it's just, you know, nothing super interesting. It's just this thing. That's all. And also you get a bunch of, you know, descriptions for all the characters as well. It's very interesting. I don't know if I want to go through all of it, because there's a lot. It's basically a Pokédex. 
Perfect card. A goddess of measurable power and poise. Mm. The light that she emits is capable of causing acute blindness and in some cases, death. Mm. And that's that's all the enemies. You know, some enemies, like uh, the upside down one, like this one, I guess, is like random. So you have to like fight the, the same enemies over and over again for it to show up. So yeah, that's there, all the enemies in the game. There you go. Got the achievement for it as well. I don't know if it means anything, but... That's like one thing, uh... One thing I haven't shown yet, you know, the tree fight. Anyway, I guess that's that's basically almost all of the game, really. There's still a few things, even, even doing all of that, even being as thorough as I can, there's still a few things I've missed in, uh, in Headspace, I feel like. There's definitely tons of Easter eggs. Uh, there's also the secret black space locations I haven't really done, which I don't really feel like doing. It's the same locations, except there's like little Easter eggs in them as well if you visit them with the secret locations. But it's a little tedious to like, to get them, you know, basically. Some of them are random chance, some of them you need an item for it. Uh, I believe the Universal Remote, which is something you gotta grind for as well in the junkyard. I don't know, anyway. I'd rather not do that. It's not super poor, it's not really significant. However, speaking of black space though, I'm not I said I'm most I'm basically done with headspace. That doesn't mean I'm done with the routes. Because as it turns out, uh you can revisit black space not through the secret shortcuts, but rather in even deeper black space, you could say. Black space 2, electric boogaloo <laughs> in the Hikikomori route. So let's do that real quick. I don't know how long, how much content there is in it, but you can go back here actually. You see these like bloody footprints by the way. You can go back, go back to white space, and then from here, enter black space. 